Good afternoon and thank you for joining. We will get started in about 10 minutes. So about 12.05 we'll start once everyone has joined the um, webinar. And just so you know, this is a webinar. I am not able to see you, but you are able to see myself and the other presenter. Welcome, thank you all for joining us. We will get started in about five minutes. We're just letting everybody else make sure that they're able to join in. And at 12.05, we will begin our presentation.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Elements of Kindergarten, What to Expect in Your Child's First Year. During this webinar, you are able to see me, but I am not able to see you. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, down in the lower hand box, you will see a Q&A. That is where you are able to type in your questions, and then myself or Emily Sweeney, the other presenter, will answer those questions at the end of the webinar. I am Gabrielle Rodovian. I am the Assistant Principal, Director of Special Education here at Julie Billiard School. I have been with Julie Billiard School for four years. I started as a second grade teacher and then have moved into the Assistant Principal's role. And I also have Emily Sweeney, and I will allow Emily Sweeney to introduce herself. Hello, my name is Emily Sweeney. Um, I am one of the kindergarten intervention specialists at Julie Billiard Akron. Um, I have been working at Julie Billiard Akron for the past four years. And for those four years, I have been in the kindergarten classroom. So I was one of the teachers that helped start up the school and start the kindergarten classroom and have continued to grow within that classroom every single day. Um, I'm extremely excited because we actually just finished um, our first round of screening and we have accepted some absolutely incredible humans into our group for this coming fall. We do still have a few spots open. So if at the end of this, you're feeling extra excited, we recommend getting that application in as soon as possible, um, just so we can get your student into our setting. We can get to know your student and hopefully have them join us for the fall 21-22 school year. Thank you, Emily. Emily is going to start our presentation today, um, and then I will finish up towards the end. So our first slide talks about understanding our environment within kindergarten, um, the expectations that come with it. It's obviously a lot different than you would see in a preschool or daycare setting, um, which we do see a lot of our students come from. Um, there are lots of whole group learning opportunities, and that is what we're going to start with. But we also do spend a lot of time in small group settings as well, so we can cater to the individual needs that your student may bring. Um, the first whole group opportunity that your student is going to get is first thing in the morning. Um, the kiddos come in, they know how to unpack their backpacks, they know that things go in their cubbies, and then they come into the classroom and are expected to start at their desks, whether that be standing, sitting in a specialized seat, um, all of the that opportunities, but they are going to be sitting at their desks. Um, and they are going to do what's called morning work. And at the beginning of the school year, it looks a lot different than the end of the school year, because at the beginning of the school year, we're really just getting your student comfortable with being a student. We understand that they're not going to come in and just know how to be a student. So their morning work is really going to start off with something very simple, like tracing straight lines or gaining those very important base things that they'll need to become better learners down the line. Um, then throughout the school year, as the students start learning different things in different academics, morning work starts to cater to those academics that we're working on. Um, and it will kind of counterbalance or every other day between a language arts or a math, whether it be tracing numbers, um, tracing letters, working on 10 frames, tracing shapes, um, starting sentence structure. Um, it'll all be within morning work, but it will never be anything that they've never seen before. Sometimes too, some days, I know me personally, just like the kids, I don't wanna come in and start my day doing something very task oriented. So sometimes it's just a coloring page that says happy fall. So something very comfortable like that. Um, then next, and you'll see this with our schedule as well, we move into our circle time or our morning meeting. And this allows students to get away from their desks because we really do, especially in kindergarten, like to give the students a majority out of desk time and on carpet squares or in centers. Um, so students will be seated on a carpet square and it usually has their name on it just so they know where their personal space is. Um, and from here we have up on our active panel, which you can see on the slide, that giant tablet looking item on the board is an active panel. 
And we're very blessed to be able to use these within our classroom setting. And we'll go through morning meeting slides that introduce how a student is feeling um, and allowing students to let us know first thing in the morning, you know what, I'm feeling angry. Awesome, I'm really glad you let me know that. We're gonna work through this together. Um, then we go into calendar knowledge. We go into talking about the weather. We go through shapes, colors, letters, numbers. And then again, as the school year goes on, we start adding more important things like sight words, graphing, um, patterns, CVC words. Um, along with this, it's very teacher led, but it's mostly us modeling so the students can come up and have an opportunity to then do it their, themselves. Um, I know especially our students right now, they are very comfortable with the way that morning meeting rolls. So almost sometimes me and my co-teacher can just step back and be like, sure, you can run it today. That's awesome. I would love for you to be my special helper, be my teacher and take the time to lead the group, which then in turn gives them that more independence to be like, hey, I know what I'm talking about. Um, in morning meeting as well, we work on a different song or poem. And this is just to work on that teacher led student echo. Um, a lot of times too, I'm actually also a dance teacher. So a lot of times the poems will have some fun movements with it, um, which for some of our students is even more of a positive bonus. Um, so morning meeting is an awesome time for the kids, especially if morning work may not have gone so well first thing in the morning. Morning meeting is really a great time for our students as a group to just kind of get ready for the day. Um, amazing, uh, love. So another whole group learning opportunity for our students is our art activities. We like to do a read aloud and then a craft that has to do with the book that we read. First and foremost, to build that comprehension. Um, but then it's always fun to be able to kind of have something to take home to a parent and be like, look, I made this craft, but first we read a book about it. Um, so students are going to be once again seated at their desks or at a table. We do like to use the kidney shaped tables from time to time, um, especially if it's paint that we're doing. Um, tempera paint to be precise, we'll usually do that in a table. So the students can share small chunks or small cups of the tempera paint, which you'll see requires some collaboration taking turns with the paint. Sometimes we will only give the students one paintbrush per cup. So the students will have to work on turn taking and waiting and understanding that it may not exactly be their time, but everyone's going to get to finish their project at some point. Um, a lot of our art activities start off as just one step direction. Um, there's always a model up on the board so the students know what the end result is going to look like. And then from there, we'll say step one, we need to color this or step one, we need to draw a face. Step two, you know, we'll get there once step one is taken care of. Um, we also a lot of times will place uh, the steps up on the board and we'll write them because for some of our students who are very good readers, it is nice to have that written aspect of it just to help with processing. So we'll give both options. And then as again, the school year goes on and we start building in the idea that they're a stronger student now, they're getting ready for first grade, we'll start adding in two-step directions or even three-step directions at a time so we can start you know, rolling. Um, another really awesome whole group time is center time. And we use centers in many different parts across our kindergarten class. Uh, we'll use centers in math class, we'll use centers in language arts, and we do also have different center stations around the classroom that are used throughout the day and throughout the week. Um, centers work on practicing lots of different skills. Most of them are pre-learned, um, but sometimes we will put a center out that is challenging to the student just to push them past, you know, a little bit of that point to be like, Sometimes we're going to be handed things that we don't know how to do, but that doesn't mean we can't try. Um, we also a lot of times like to use centers um, as a time for the students to collaborate as peers. Not all the centers are academic based. We have dramatic play, 
we have block centers. Sometimes we'll throw puzzle centers in there to allow the students to work together and build some of those social skills that they may not have or that they do have. They're just not exactly sure how to push it out to the rest of the group. Um, and centers also really helps increase independence um, as a five or six year old. They still do depend on us a lot, but this really gives them a chance to become an independent learner and an independent student. And it gives them some confidence. They feel better about themselves when they know that there's something they can do by themselves. Um, and across the academics, we also will use this for data collection. We a lot of times will incorporate different pieces that maybe we've noticed are on IEPs and we'll place them in the centers around the classroom to help your student continue to get that extra little oomph that they may need to help them reach those IEP goals as well. Uh, and then our one of my favorites is um, our read aloud or our story times. I usually love to do story times. Um, again, I'm a dance teacher. I did a lot of drama and theatrical things in high school. So for me, read alouds is almost like a chance for me to act with my students. Um, it gives me a chance to make silly voices. Um, sometimes I even find myself reading the book and using my hand to express what might be happening in the book. Um, so this is always a really fun time for our students. They are seated on their carpet squares and we're seated as a whole group. Um, we do set expectations for what carpet square time looks like. We talk about crisscross applesauce. We talk about hands and lap, keeping our bodies safe. Um, but this is a really awesome time for students to really start gaining those extremely important reading skills that they need. They are noticing that the voices change with voice inflection. They're understanding that what's being said is also in the pictures. And we also go through and we work on tapping it out or looking at CVC words or sight words that the students can see. Um, if you've been around a tour within our school and been into the kindergarten classroom, we have a word wall that contains a bunch of words that the students came up with. And now at this point in the year, we're doing our read alouds around the word wall and the students are able to identify words from the word wall that are also in the book or vice versa. Another great thing about read aloud time is it builds comprehension. Um, we just work through those who was in the story, what happened, where were they? And uh, we also talk about fiction and nonfiction and really just building those super duper important core base reading values to help your student just become a stronger, more confident reader. And then, like we discussed, we have a small group opportunity for our students. And this is really hit home with reading and math. We know those are the biggest struggles amongst academic stuff. We know that some students are a math brain, some students are a reading brain, and we just are able to work through that and split them into groups with peers or friends that have the same feeling in their brain. <laughs> um, so in this, this circumstance, students are seated at um, a table. We usually like to do a nice kidney shaped table time for this. Um, both of us are in front or around an active panel for that opportunity. And along with that, students are able to work on the floor. Like I discussed with centers, this is a time that we will use centers to place students who are grasping the topic quickly and allow them to go and work on something else while we can work with another student or two who may not have fully grasped the topic. Um, the participation is starts with teacher led, but it's always modeling. So then the students can work together and then they can also do it by themselves, which again, in turn goes all the way back to that morning work, first thing in the morning the next day. Um, and then we are really able to, with that six to one ratio, give each student what they may need, depending on the topic. Um, we're able to really hone in and see, well, I can really visually understand why you're not maybe grasping this or why this doesn't make sense. When we do centers, I'm going to keep those two students with me. Or when it comes to reading, I'm going to keep maybe just two friends who are reading this book with me while two other friends go over here 
when the timer goes off, we'll switch. So everyone is getting that individualized attention, whether they're successful or not. And then in a nutshell, this is just what kindergarten pretty much looks like um, every single day, minus some nice specials that we do get to enjoy, which we love. We love gym, we love art, and we love music. We can't, we can't get away from it. Um, but we always start with arrival. Again, this is the time where the students will either go to what's called walking club or quiet time. But with COVID protocol, it's been a little bit different this year. So during arrival, students come straight to the classroom. And during that time, students are pretty much allowed to do whatever they feel comfortable doing in the realm of they can play with blocks, they can look at books, or they can do a puzzle. So just some quiet play time just to get their day started. That way they're not just coming straight in and sitting down and doing work. Um, after that, we do morning work and announcements. Morning work takes about, I would say, maximum 10 minutes. And then from there, we do our morning announcements. Um, Gabrielle or Jason will do morning announcements and we are able to project it to our students in the classroom on the active panel, which is fun because our students think that Gabrielle and Jason are movie stars because they're on the TV. Um, from there, we go into our morning meeting and our read aloud. Because that is a long period of time for our students to be doing so many tasks, we do incorporate a lot of wiggle time in there. We love Go Noodle. We dance all the time. We're constantly jumping up and down. So in between morning meeting and read aloud, you will see opportunities for students to wiggle, get out of their space, dance a little bit. Um, and then from read aloud, we do go into math. Math across our primary level is very fluid. We do have a few friends that from first grade that come down to kindergarten. If a student is higher in math, there is an opportunity for them to join a first grade group um, just to keep them academically thriving, just to keep them, you know, pushing on. From math, we go to recess. That's always with K12, which is a great time for kindergarten to get to meet some kiddos who know, you know, the lay of the land. Um, from recess, we do have a 15 minute snack, 10 to 15 minute snack, depends on the day. Sometimes you gotta just take a longer snack time. Um, and then after snack, we go into foundations and this is every single day. From foundations, we do language arts. Again, language arts is very similar with math. All of the groups are very fluid. We always want your student to be confident in what they're doing while still pushing them to be the best academic version of themselves. From there, we go to our second recess which the kids love. This one is a little bit longer. This is more of your normal recess time. Um, and then after that, the students go to lunch. Again, because of COVID, the students have been eating in the classrooms with us, but the goal and the expectation is that by fall, they will be in the lunchroom again, which is down in the gym with our first and second graders. Again, giving them more peer interaction. Some of our kindergartners have best friends in first grade, which is great that they get this time with them. Um, and then after lunch, we do have a small siesta time and we don't expect your kids to nap. We know that they probably won't, but it's a really nice quiet time where students will lay on blankets or towels. We have calm music playing. Your child may look at a book, just kind of get themselves ready for the afternoon because full day kindergarten, if they haven't done it, is a lot. It's exhausting and we totally understand that. We know that that's how it works. Um, and then after that, uh, depending on the day, you'll see social skills, science, or social studies. Then we will have religion. We will go into those centers that I discussed earlier, and then your student will pack up and they'll be ready to go home. Now, we know that sounds like a jam-packed day, but amongst all of those things, there is a lot of wiggle breaks. There is a lot of fine motor brain breaks in between where we just sit and play with Play-Doh. Um, your student is not expected to sit that entire time. We know that that's not how it works. I can't even sit for that entire time. So we don't expect your kindergartner to either. All right, toileting is, is one of the most brought up discussed questions for our students going into kindergarten. No, we don't expect every student to be completely potty trained, but it is one of those life skills that we are 
having those students work on. They need to be able to get to that point where they can be independent. They can self-recognize when they need to use the restroom. Our kindergarten room is lucky enough to have a bathroom right in the room. So the students are learning to be independent. They're asking for assistance if they need it. Some students may be on a bathroom schedule. They might use those potty watches or those visuals where you can see them kind of dancing and they need to go and the teacher's like, hey, time to go to the bathroom, let's go. But some students will just independently ask. That is our goal. Our ultimate goal is for the child to be able to sit there as they go into those older grades, raise their hand and say, can I use the restroom? But in kindergarten, we're helping them. We're giving them those reminders. They can use those potty watches here at school. The teachers are here. We know accidents are gonna happen. We understand that, but we're here to help them build those independent skills because going to the restroom is a life skill that they have to learn. And when it goes in, if you go into our kindergarten room right now, you'll see a visual on the mirror and it talks about remembering to wash your hand, how many pumps of soap you need and how many paper towels you need because our kids, some kids, when you go in the bathroom, if you're not watching them, they've pulled that whole roll of toilet paper or they've used all the paper towels. We're getting them to a point where, hey, I can see, oh, I need two. I get two paper towels. I dry my hands. Or I can't just stick my hands underneath the water and that counts as washing them. So our teachers are there. Again, in the beginning, they're there as that model. They're walking them through that. And then as the end of the year, they're able to use the restroom independently. They don't need to be there to prompt them, to give them those reminders. And they also have those visuals as a reminder in the restroom. As for eating, eating incorporates so many skills, independence, fine motor, communication, and executive functioning. The students, they're sitting at their desk. They have to think, okay, is my desk right now clean so that I can sit here and eat my lunch? They've got their lunchbox. Now they have to unzip it and take out all those items. Hmm, what should I eat first? Do I need help opening something? Again, this time they can say, okay, I'm gonna eat my sandwich first. Opening up that bag, taking it out. Having that reminder sometimes to start eating because a lot of our kids, they, they get it all ready and they're like, okay, what do I do now? So reminding, okay, hey, time to eat your lunch. They start eating. Then they can ask for help if they need opening up a package. Our goal is to get them again to be independent with opening up their lunch items. But we understand there's going to be some things, whether it's those fruit cups with those lids and that juice might be spilling all over or just those packages you can't open up. But again, that's where they're going to sit there, raise their hand and say, can you help me? And then those teachers will say, try first and then I'll help you. Also using utensils to eat. A lot of our kids, they use those fine motor skills of pinching up food to eat, but now we're working on using a spoon, using a fork, inserting our straw into our drinks. Toileting and eating are huge life skills, but they can be worked on in so many different ways in the classroom with snack, with lunch, with setting up routines. But it also allows our students and our teachers to be able to just talk and get to know the kids. The kids learn everything about it. As you get into the older grades, we have something called Lunch Bunch, where we uh, get a group of kids together. We had a girls' lunch bunch this year. So the girls all got together and they were able to sit there and talk about what they did over the weekend. And that's our goal, is not to just sit there in silence. We be able to ask questions or make conversation while we're eating so that they can build those good, positive relationships. And that's all done through modeling. It starts with our teachers, then it leads to those, uh, the students working together to being able to be independent with it. Fine motor, like I said, with lunch, fine motor is used all day long. The, it's increased expectation to use writing utensils because some of our kids have never maybe picked up a pencil if they didn't go to a preschool, but it's the goal to be able to get in a routine of being able to write, being able to hold that pencil correctly. We've had the privilege of having our occupational therapist in our uh, kindergarten room, and she does a writer's workshop where she's allowed this, 
and that helped the students gain those skills to be able to learn how to write, how to hold a pencil, how to even hold scissors so that they can be active participants in the classroom. Um, she, during writer's workshop, she, one example was she taped um, different spots on the wall and the students had to put their work on the wall. So it helped them hold the paper and then have their pencil to trace what they needed to do. Those things all build core, core strength, hand-eye coordination, and allows them to get that fine motor skill of being able to write. And then more independent opportunities throughout the days or throughout the school day. Activities that require coloring or writing responses. Like Emily had said, when they come in, they got morning work. Some days it's gonna be coloring. Some days it's going to be tracing or writing. Some days it might be painting, but it's not all just here. I always have a pencil in my hand. They're also using other things to help build that fine motor skill, whether it's using TheraPutty, which is a harder consistency than Play-Doh so they can build up their grasp because some of our students they come in and they have a very weak fine motor grasp to holding that pencil so that therapy allows them to build their strength in their hands um, through centers that we have they're working on object manipulation so building with blocks they might also um, do just even dressing a barbie doll is working on those fine motor skills that they need to be able to be successful with holding that pencil, holding those crayons. So our teachers allow for many opportunities for our students to work on their fine motor skills throughout the day. Um, even when they're climbing at the recess time, they have to climb the ladder. They have to hold it and bring their body up. Yes, sometimes it's gross motor, but just being able to put your fingers around that bar is a huge fine motor piece for them. So if they didn't have those fine motor strengths, they're, they're really building it up through all the opportunities that our teachers allow in the classrooms. Now, this is something that's great and exciting that is coming for this upcoming school year. We are in the process of expanding our kindergarten classroom. If you have not had the opportunity to take a tour, and you would like to come and take a tour of our school, um, you can feel free to reach out to me or Jason Weinich, who is the principal, and you can come see our school. But right now our kindergarten room has been very um, small. And so we are actually expanding some walls and making a bigger kindergarten room. And this is a um, model of what the main classroom will look like. And so if you are not familiar with everything, but here at JB, all of our um, classes have a main classroom and a resource room. So this is the main classroom. The resource room is going to be on the other side of the wall um, and there will be a door that will allow the students to go between the main classroom and the resource room. And those resource rooms are used for a student who might need some time to either just take a break, working on some one-on-one -on -one skills, but that is also where they are teaching during those um, small group academics, like the reading, the writing, the math. And then they do those whole group instructions for that science, social studies, religion. Um, and so having a bigger space allows for our students to have more area and room to be uh, successful in the classroom, especially during those centers, being able to really spread out during those centers so that they can uh, work on those communications because for us communication and fine motor are huge parts of our day uh, being able to ask what they need and then reciprocate and talk about how they have been because once they're learning how to communicate they're able to go home and they're able to share those events with you at home because i know i have personally have a child and when i say how was your day and they go fine it was the same as yesterday i'm like oh great so you, you want them to be able to come home and share something about their day. So maybe it was a center they did. They always ha have themes to their centers, whether it's the cooking center. So maybe they made a cake for somebody in their center, or maybe it was the, um, they've done a tool shop. So maybe they were able to build something that day, different things. They are able to share that experience with you because your child is going away for seven and a half hours a day. You want to make sure that you're able to have that relationship with your school, with your child, 
and be able to reciprocate. Whatever's going on at school can go on at home too. So as a parent, when you're at home, work on those fine motor things, whether it's playing with Play-Doh or I know you can get therapy, so you can do that. The kids can work on that or using the utensils. Um, a big thing right now too would be going out and planting a garden in your yard. You can dig your little hole and take your seeds and plant your seeds. Uh, that's something that our kindergarten class does every spring. So that will be coming up here soon. They always plant um, plants and we see who uh, gets the tallest around here. So we look forward to that uh, opportunity here. So we look forward to this expansion of our kindergarten room, more space for our students and um, just allows for a successful environment for our kindergartners because that kindergarten year is so important for our students. Um, this was the last of the kindergarten series. We had three other ones. If you uh, miss them or would like to check them out, you can go to our website. They are uh, available, they are recorded, and this one will also be recorded too. Um, and then also, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, feel free to reach out to our admissions at jb or jbschool.org, and you can set up a tour with one of our schools. We have our Westlake campus that will be opening up this upcoming school year. They will be kindergarten through fourth grade. We have our Lyndhurst School and our Akron School. And as Emily said, here in Akron, we do only have a few uh, spots available for this upcoming school year for kindergartners. So if you're thinking about it, start filling out that application or you can give us a call and we can set up that tour just so you can come see what the environments are like here. Our next series of webinars will be um, anxiety. Anxiety is a huge piece for many of our students, whether it's an older student that is transitioning to our school and they have anxiety about leaving. Um, even some parents have that anxiety of letting their child go to school. So this is to help understand and support children with anxiety. Some kids, they just ha have such anxiety over just either coming into a school or leaving their parents or just taking on a task that might be difficult for them because they have never felt successful with academics or social. Um, so this next set of webinars is going to be in May. So you can go to the juliebilliardschool.org webs website and register there. So those are going to be up and ready here soon. Now, um, if you have any questions, this is your chance to, at the bottom of your screen, if it said Q&A, go ahead and type in your question. Emily and I are here to answer any questions. Um, right now, we don't have any, but we'll stick around for a few minutes. We appreciate you guys spending your afternoon with us. Um, let us know what we can do to help you. I have appreciated everyone attending. All right, I'm going to answer this question live. It is, what do the children do at religion time? Um, that is a great question. So we actually have a religious a religion series that we follow, um, and it's a very, I would say, gentle book. Um, and basically, we just talk about um, how God made the world, how God made us. Um, we talk about forgiveness. We talk about saying sorry. Um, it also gives us some really fun activities to do during Christmas time, during Lent, during Easter. Um, but a lot of our religion that we do um, has a lot of overlap with some social, the social skills that our students are working on with our speech therapist. So it's actually been really fantastic to be able to carry that over and be like, wow, we just talked about this with our speech teacher, Miss Katie, about how when a friend feels sad, sometimes we need to say sorry. Um, or in other cases, we talk about how growing is good and what types of things grow, which then we can bring into our science lesson. Um, so religion is just very different depending on one, the time of year. But like I said, we do have a very fantastic 
religion book little series that we follow. I'm pretty sure it's called Christ Our Life. That's the one. <laughs> that, that's correct. Um, but it's it's very sweet and gentle, and it always has a really nice Bible verse that kind of goes with everything. Um, I know kindergarten and first grade both use um some really fun YouTube videos that also sometimes talk about the type of Bible story that we talked about in kindergarten. You can look it up. It's really cute. It's called The Holy Tales. And it's this little itty bitty like group of caterpillars and they live in a library and they talk about how they like to eat books, but they kind of break down different Bible stories and make them feel what I would say less aggressive because obviously the Bible is such a big book. And as a small child, you're like, I don't understand what any of this means. Um, but it really just breaks it down and um, discusses it very gently. Um, I know, especially during this time of Easter, um, this was a big topic to introduce to kindergarten. And it is every single year. It's always something that we really tiptoe into. Um, but our series does a very nice job of explaining, you know, Jesus dying on the cross for our sins without having it come across um, aggressive because I know a lot of our students feel sad knowing that Jesus died for us because they're like, he was such a good person. And we're like, he was a good person, but that's why he did it for our sins. So it's very much so catered to kindergarten age students. And sometimes we also spend religion talking about social skills. Um, we'll use that religion time to, like I said, really introduce maybe something that we've seen within the classroom. And we were like, you know what, here's what God would say. Here's how, you know, we as a group need to work through this. So. And something to piggyback off of for Emily is you will find out that with our students, we have a, it's like 40, 60 ratio. 40% of our students are Catholic, 60% are non-Catholic. And what we are truly trying to ingrain in our students is to be good citizens, to go out there and make a difference. Um, because some of these students have never had any piece of religion. So we're introducing it to them. We're bringing it into discussion. Um, each child is able to have their own faith based, based off of their home. Um, but we are a Catholic school. We do expose our students to it. Um, but our big emphasis is making our students be good citizens. So we have the, a theme every year. And this year was lending a helping hand. And so we were teaching our students to be good citizens in and out of school. So they were able to have a bingo board every month and do um, like volunteer opportunities at home. Something that allowed them to show, okay, I am taking what I'm learning at school and incorporating it at home. Well, there was help make dinner or take the trash out, just things that allowed our students to, stay, to step up and take some responsibility at home. Um, and we do have prayer service every Friday. And so it was, if parents had pictures of their students doing those lending helping hand things, they were able to send them in and we pre presented them to the students during our prayer service. Um, we do have mass once a month here at Saint Seb or at Julie Billiard with a priest from St. Sebastian's that comes over. Um, but the, the students just learn to be respectful. They go to mass, they sit there, they respect their friends that are Catholic um, who might receive the Eucharist. But the main point is to make our students be good citizens so that when they leave our school, they know how to be respectful of each other. If there's any other questions, feel free to let us know. And uh, We'll be here for just a couple more minutes. All right, well, we're gonna wrap this up. Um, I appreciate all of you attending today. Again, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to reach out to myself or Jason Weinich, who is the principal here. Um, thank you all for attending and have a wonderful day.